Personally, my view is donating to charity shops should be the last option because um, only 10 to 30 percent of items in charity shops are sold the rest is generally exported and we dump it in other countries which is awful mm. so i think really think about can you make something else with it could you upcycle it could you turn it into something different or would a friend like it could you give it to, i give my stuff to my mum. my mum loves my old clothes so give it to your mum. does someone else you know want it could you like swap it with a friend for something else could you sell it on depop or any other second second hand platform for selling things We are at sustainable fashion designer Lydia Bolton's studio in London to find out more about how she started a slow fashion brand by upcycling textiles into garments which have caught the eye of many big brands like Nike and Adidas. Lydia has a knack for turning unwanted fabrics into desirable one-of-a-kind pieces and I'm looking forward to learning more about the process she follows to create her collections. Thank you for coming on Clean Cut TV. We just want to hear about you and your story and the story of your brand. So I always wanted to be a fashion designer. Um, my mum taught me how to sew when I was like, a, like about 13. Um, and in my personal life, I was always interested in like wearing secondhand clothing, always at charity shops, always loved thrifting. And I always wanted to be a fashion designer for my career. And I just didn't really combine the two. So at uni, my work wasn't, you know, like sustainably minded. Um, but in my personal life, I was like interested in sustainable fashion. And then after finishing uni, went and worked at House of Holland for a couple of years, which I loved working there. But again, like in my personal life was really centered around thrifting, wearing secondhand as much as I could, um, trying to live as like eco-consciously as, pos as possible. And yeah, then I just got to the point where I realized my career should, I wanted my career to be more aligned with my personal values. Um, so I ended up quitting my job and then like from that figured out what I wanted to do within sustainable fashion. So was it scary going out on your own? Uh, yeah, it was scary, but I, so I used to work in a pub when I interned, when I first started working in fashion and I just knew I would just go back to the pub. So that was like my bills covered. And I think like, that's what's scary is like obviously yeah. living in London, have, like have to pay bills. Um, so yeah, I just knew I'd go back to the pub, work there to pay my bills. And I just knew I would like figure it out and find out what area of sustainability within fashion I wanted to do. So after I quit my job, I did an online course at the Centre of Sustainable Fashion. And on this course, um, you learn all about the different areas of um, like fashion and how unsustainable it is in lots of different ways. And the main fact that I was just so drawn to was the, like the vast amount of garment and textile waste. And then I could also see clearly like my skills as a designer and maker, how I could use these skills to, yeah, create something positive with waste. What was your first item of clothing that you made? The first thing I made was um, an upcycled tracksuit set for Jay Gray for her first performance at Glastonbury. That's cool. Yeah, it was Wait, cool. how did you get that? That's the first <laughs> thing you cool. made. Yeah, that was the first upcycled piece I made um, because she, she'd she borrowed some of my pieces before mm. to wear on shoots and she really like, really was like supportive of me. And then she messaged me and said, hey, like I'm, can I borrow something again for Glastonbury? And I said, oh yeah, like I'd love to make you something new. Like I'm currently now just focusing on reusing secondhand textiles. And she was really really loved that that was also what I was doing and was yeah so it was a really, very cool first thing to have made <laughs> so, yeah very cool because you do a lot of these collaborations with like amazing brands and like you have a lot of I suppose connections or something but yeah. what do you think is that these like brands and these people are drawn to you like why obviously you have an amazing brand but what gives you that extra special something to say quoi <laughs> that makes people want to work with you and wear your clothes I think a lot of it is I'm quite transparent. Like I show the full process of like sourcing the textile, the unpicking, the remaking. I think I've got like a reasonably distinct like style of kind of like patchworky. It's kind of like slightly retro, but not like particularly retro. It's like girly and cute, but like also slightly sporty. So there's like a lot of 
mix of styles and vibes going on. Um, so yeah, I think it's that. And I think I also quite enjoy being creative in like different capacities. So I enjoy kind of like doing a project with a brand and like upcycling their products. And then I also enjoy the sourcing myself and like making my own like mainline collections mm. as well. So how was it that you found your signature? Like when did you decide that patchwork was for me? Um, well, I think when you're using secondhand textiles, like you naturally kind of have to do a bit of patchworking because things always are just only certain sizes and then you kind of need a bit more fabric. So you just have to whack an extra bit on. Um, and yeah, cause there's normally only like a couple, like with tablecloths, I only ever like find one or two. Um, so then to be able to make like multiple items, multiple items, I just have to, yeah, patchwork different fabrics together. And I think also just my personal style is quite DIY, like, my yeah my style isn't like too polished or like minimal or anything so patchwork also like fits yeah mm. my natural style so you said you used to back in the day or when you were younger you were always into like secondhand clothing yeah and buying from charity shops why is it that that's carried on with your life and your your value and into your work why is sustainability so important to you uh, I just think we already have enough. Yeah. Like we have produced so much. It's like there's, I, th I think the fact is like there's enough clothing for the next seven generations of people already. Already. Yeah. So if we never produced anything again, yeah, or however many great, 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 great grand nephews, nieces or whoever <laughs> would have enough clothing. So that's like a lot of um items already produced and i think yeah we just don't necessarily need to make yeah we can just use what we've already got um and i think there's a lot of amazing fabrics and textiles that yeah need to have new life as something else because i also like do love fashion and like per everyone has their own style and it's not necessarily that what exists right now might be what you want to wear so actually it kind of does sometimes need to be changed and like altered and upcycled to be something that we do want but yeah we need to value everything we already have produced so what is your favorite part of upcycling is it the, like leasing a new life to the garment or is it just being able to do, be creative yeah, in the process? Yeah, it's the creative side. Like yeah. I love being creative. I love um, making things. I love having like ideas, researching, thinking about something and then testing it out and seeing it like come to life. And then I also really like, like if I make something, I'm like, oh, it's so cute. That's just like <laughs> my favourite. Like, I just love that. So yeah, um, yeah, the main is like the creative side that I really, really enjoy. Mm. And have you always been creative? Yeah, always been, um, yeah, like I was in a, I mean, not particularly academic. So like always was doing like drawing, like literally have drawn clothes since I was like very small. Do you have any sketches? Or... Um, I don't, but I used to do this thing called, I did it like all of my teenage years called dress a day. So I drew a dress every single day. I mean, not necessarily dress, but I just called it dress a day. Oh, wow. Yeah. Literally from like 13 to probably 17, I drew, but not 17, sorry, 13, 16. I definitely Three stopped. Years. Do yeah yeah oh, yeah, wow. yeah and I have all my mum's got all the notebooks of it of like every day I drew like an outfit would you <laughs> go back to the book and see like trying to make an outfit from one of them no done it? Well, done it. <laughs> they're not they're not my style now oh. I was like um it was a lot more like avant-garde like I loved Alexander McQueen oh. it was like a lot more like over the top like feathers and oh. you know not <laughs> <laughs> yeah like um not really what I design to make now. <laughs> okay, yeah, we, we grow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so you just recently did a collab with Adidas yes. for Man U, the women's yeah. football team. Yeah. When they reached out to you, did you have creative license and, and had the ability to say, I wanted my process is sustainable and this is the way that I'm going to do it? Or did they come to you and say, like, we like your style? And... Yeah, yeah. So they reached out and wanted to remix the old uh, the men's kit into like a new fresh kit for the women's team. So it was like a really exciting project because it was like making something new for like the women's team and like really championing women in football and like celebrating all of that. Um, and yeah, I could do my own designs on it. They kind of like loosely outlined the style of pieces that they were looking for. Um, but in terms of like creativity and design, that was like for me to design and choose. So with, with these brands, they aren't like exactly sustainable. Yeah. So how is it, is it your idea that you want to kind of push this agenda on, on them so that they can realize that you can do it sustainable? Like what, why would you collaborate with companies that aren't exactly sustainable? Well, I think for huge brands, it's really hard for them to be sustainable. Yeah. Um, and 
like they're just so big in infrastructure, the supply chains and all of that. So actually for a rural, like for a huge brand to access sustainability, it's quite hard. And I think a way that they can like authentically be sustainable without like maybe a greenwashing thing is by working with like smaller independent like designers and upcyclers so like for my nike workshops it was using the defected stock so all of the stuff that we made in the workshops um yeah it was made from stock that wouldn't be able to be sold mm. i have been fortunate that kind of from the start brands have wanted to work with me um my first kind of work with Nike in 2019 when I first like early had set up because Jay Gray had a launch party for one of her songs uh-huh. and it was also with Nike and like I was there doing like remaking at the event so that was like kind of my first brand partnership I guess and then soon after that I did a collaboration with Nietzsche where I remade their dead stock into like a really cool collection so yeah kind of like working with brands has been throughout and it, yeah it gives you confidence and it's just like really nice that they want to work with you and that they see and understand like the changes that you want to make in the fashion industry mm-hmm. and how like I want to reuse and remake stuff and yeah that they believe in that and think actually I want to be involved with this as well and yeah working with me to do so. Mm, so yeah. you do many pop-ups yeah. and you've recently done one at Selfridges. Yes. How did that come about? And I heard it was a big success, so congrats. Yeah, thank you. Um, it was a big, it was really good. So I did the pop-up with a South London's Makers Market and they do lots of different markets all year round in South London. And they have this kind of, I, I mean annual, because they've done it for the last three years in a row, um, so I'm going to say annual, annual pop-up in Selfridges and they invited me to be part of it this year, which was so exciting. Mm-hmm. I think, um, yeah, I think I was like one of the first upcycling brands to have did it. I think Hermit, who does pajamas, did it last year, but well, yeah, one of the first upcycling brands to do it. And I sold, I sold out on all my cardigans, which is very exciting. Mm-hmm. And it's just so fun, um, meeting people like, predominantly my brand is online so it's just so nice when people that you're kind of like friends with on Instagram come and say hi yeah. and you like really feel like such a community and like friendship with everyone. I'm sure you've had some challenges yeah. but what's been the most difficult since the beginning of the brand? Lots of challenges it's like a very hard building a brand and it is a really slow game and I think I wasn't necessarily prepared for like the slow game like it was like yeah a slow start like financially I had to like like pay my rent and live in London so worked full-time in the pub every evening it was a late night pub so I would like get home at like three in the morning get up at eight to work on my brand until six and then go back to the pub in the evening so it's a lot of a lot of work right. and I yeah also had no idea how to start a brand so like didn't know anything about marketing, didn't know anything about sales. Like basically the only thing I knew how to do was like the creative sewing and making of clothes, which is barely 50% of having Mm. a brand. Like the marketing side of it, the promotion of what you do is really what I've had to learn about. And like that kind of is not more important, but as important. Mm. And like with sustainability, people don't buy stuff just because it's sustainable, which I thought people would when I started. <laughs> Turns out they don't. They have to actually also really like and want the item of clothing for them to buy it. So yeah, that was the main challenge really was me learning how to like do all that side of the brand. So I suppose <laughs> I find it so impressive because everyone we've spoken to have, has been the creative and the fashion background. They haven't had the business background, but they've made it work. Yeah. So what are your tips for those that want to start a business with they've got the creative down yeah they know the what's cre- the business savvy side well I think it's just absorbing as much information as you can so I just listen to every single podcast I could find about like small businesses starting a brand how to sell things how to market yourself I literally like followed everyone that I came across on the podcast follow them on Instagram learn as much as I could from them like would maybe invest in doing like courses into like learning how to do these things um like if I had got to the point where I had some spare money after my rent so I think it's just really just learning as much as you possibly can like I'd get like audio books like anything possible to like learn from someone I would yeah do that and then I'd hear them like reference something and if I didn't understand what they'd reference I'd then go and like find out what that was about um there's someone called Elizabeth Styles, and she is kind of like a fashion brand 
um, consultant and she gives loads of advice if you're starting a fashion brand, but in like the sales and marketing side. And I think as soon as you find or discover someone like Elizabeth, you then will find loads of other people that also give loads of advice for like small businesses mm -hmm. and you can just learn how to apply it to your work. So you're a zero based brand. Yes. And you get scrap materials from where? From all sorts of places. So I get a lot of textiles from like eBay, Facebook Marketplace that I source myself. Um, a lot of donations from people from materials that they don't want. And then I also remake fabrics from brands. So currently I've been doing sort of cardigans and their patchwork of knit swatches, um, from knit suppliers. So knit suppliers make kind of like these different shape kind of squares and rectangles to test out different colorways, different like fabrics and techniques. And then they go to the brands that they supply for, for them to choose for each season. And then the brands build the collection. But then there's nothing really that then happens with these knit swatches because mm. they're just samples. And they, yeah, there's nothing that can be done with them. They're kind of small. No one really wants them. And then I was like fortunate that the brands got in contact with me for me to remake them. Mm. So, these are my blankets to remake. And then these are actually half made cardigans, which will be dropping soon, but they're not made yet. So they're just neatly folded up. And then this is my trims box. This is my silky and satin fabric scrap box. This is my knit scrap box. So this is my gingham scrap box. So things go like, um, in stages. And then these are the larger boxes when they're larger pieces. So they go from like the larger piece and then when there's less of them, they go into the scrap box uh -huh. to be either for like patchwork or smaller items. Very organised. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> some, some, some areas are organised. <laughs> some is like, <laughs> absolutely not. Yeah, so how often do, are, do you spend here? Like how often is sewing in your day um, Depends. It depends on like what the project is. So like there might be weeks where I'm sewing the whole time and then there'll be other weeks where I don't do too much sewing. Yeah, I've made a lot of stuff on that. So what is your day-to-day -day like at Lydia Bolton? Day-to-day -day is busy. I'm like a morning person. So I get up at about six, have my shower, leave the house. I walk halfway to work. So I do about like 40 minutes of walking and then I go on the bus for about 15, 20 minutes. Um, I used to go to the gym, but I haven't quite found the time for the gym. So now walking is what I do instead. Um, and then I like to be in for eight because I find like the morning is my favorite time of the day. Wow. I know, so I sit normally at my desk by eight, have my coffee, plan out my day and like planning out the day, I kind of look at what projects are like basically what needs to be done as soon as like most important to be finished. And then normally it's like reply to some emails and then it's either sewing or it's um, doing some like research for a project or it might be like thinking of some ideas for like a, say if it's a brand partnership, what I need to do. And then all the tasks will range from sewing, pattern cutting, sourcing, creating content. Um, yeah, lots of different tasks that I do all day. And it's not nine to five. No, it's not nine to no. five. <laughs> it's not nine to five. It's, it's not five days a week. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's not seven days a week. It's I don't know. Hustle, yeah. Eight till. <laughs> Eight till seven or eight, probably. Wow. That's wow. Long. Yeah, but I, I really enjoy it. Yeah. Like, I think probably too much. <laughs> <laughs> so what would your tips be on how people can shop more sustainably? I think it's really thinking before you buy stuff. I think it's hard because we're advertised to in so many different ways and we kind of, I don't know, feel pressures that we might need to buy things kind of because we think it's cool or like we see other people with it. But I think it's really considering your purchases and thinking about will I still want this in four years mm -hmm. will I do I care about this enough to repair it like is this really something I'm going to wear in love for a long time or maybe if it's not maybe it's like a fun dress maybe you could try renting it instead and I think it's just kind of yeah really considering what you buy and then when you're buying it really loving it for a long time, caring for it. I think really considering what happens when you no longer want it. Personally, my view is donating to charity shops should be the last option because um, only 10 to 30% of items in charity shops are sold. The rest is generally exported and we dump it in other countries, which is awful. Mm. So I think really think about, can you make something else with it? Could you upcycle it? Could you turn it into something different? 
Or would a friend like it? Could you give it? To, I give my stuff to my mum. My mum loves my old clothes. So give it to your mum. Does someone else, you know, want it? Could you like swap it with a friend for something else? Could you sell it on Depop or any other second, second hand platform for selling things? Mm -hmm.